this game tree was used in the previous video to demonstrate the idea of minimax search. However, if we search this whole tree, we're actually wasting a lot of time. And for a tree in most real scenarios, the tree would be much bigger, and we may not even have enough time to actually search it. So this video will explain minimax search with alpha, beta, pruning. Now the basic idea is to avoid searching nodes that we simply don't need to. So let's go through this tree and see which nodes have to be searched and which ones don't. If we start from the top, assuming we have an empty tree from scratch, so we don't know what the node values are yet, we'll proceed all the way down the left branch, all the way down to this state, which is either a terminal state or a state where we are reading a heuristic value from. Now, once we see this value of two here, but before we've seen anything else, because this is a maximizing node, what we know at this point is that the value here will be greater than or equal to two. We're gonna pick the biggest value. We haven't seen the next value yet. If it is less than two, we would pick two. But because it ends up being greater, we choose three, the maximum of these two values. But keep an eye on this intermediate information that we had. Now, that since three has actually been assigned to this point in the tree, this minimizing node knows that whatever value it has will be less than or equal to three. It hasn't calculated the value of this node that I'm covering yet. So from its perspective, the value here will either be three, or if this value is lower, then it will be allowed to replace it. So we look down the tree, and here, as soon as we see the value of four, this maximizer knows that whatever value ends up here will be greater than or equal to four. Now, because we have a full view of the tree, we know the actual value of that node should be five. But the algorithm doesn't need to find that value to work properly. As soon as this node reports that it's going to contain something greater than or equal to four, we can stop searching this part of the tree. We never actually look at this value of five. This value of five doesn't get stored here. We simply stop and put a value of three in this minimizing node because given a choice between three, which is known, and something greater than or equal to four, the minimum will be three. So we have a value of three here with certainty. So let's eliminate our midpoint speculation. Here we never found the actual value, so all we really know about it is that it's greater than or equal to four. But here we know the node value is three with certainty. So that's certain and that's certain. Going to here, we don't know this value yet. We don't know this value yet. We check the one. We're gonna be doing a maximization. We know that the value there will be greater than or equal to one. We don't know this value yet. Now, all we know is that whatever appears here will be greater than or equal to one. It could be 20, in which case the minimum could actually be greater than this. So we don't have enough information yet to know with certainty what this node value will be, or rather, we don't have enough information to know that it's safe to ignore this node value. So more information is needed here first. Therefore, after checking the one, we'll also look at the two. And when we've done that, we know that the maximum of those two things is in fact a two. Therefore, a value of two goes there with certainty. We have no more uncertainty there. However, we're doing a minimization here. So whatever ends up here will be less than or equal to two. But if this value will be less than or equal to two, then whatever value we have over here is irrelevant. 
because this maximizer will pick three instead of something that is less than or equal to two. Therefore, we don't bother searching this part. We don't even look at any of this stuff over here. And we never find out with certainty what value goes here, but we know that it's irrelevant because in the end it will be something less than or equal to two. We continue, and remember we don't know any of these values yet, we go down the tree, and here we find a value of eight. Once we see the eight, we know that whatever is here will be greater than or equal to eight. And we don't know how high it could be yet. Eight is greater than three, but of course, since we don't know what's over here either, there's still a lot of uncertainty as to what will end up in this node. So because of that, we will check this next node. After all, it could be greater, but it ends up not being greater. And so once we've seen the values of eight and one, we know the maximum is in fact eight. This node value becomes certain. We eliminate this bit of uncertainty here. And now we are going to compare eight to whatever we find over here. We don't know these values yet, but once we see that there's a nine here, we know that whatever ends up here will be greater than or equal to nine. Now, this minimizer will choose the smallest value, and given a choice between eight and something greater than nine, or greater than or equal to nine, eight is clearly the smaller value, therefore we stop searching, we don't look at these values, we don't find out the value of this node with any certainty. This value could have been larger, but it would have been irrelevant because this minimizer would still pick the eight. Therefore, eight becomes the value there with certainty, and we're left choosing between three, eight, and then something less than or equal to two. And the maximum of these three things is eight, and therefore the actual known certain value of that node is eight. And we did not have to look at one, two, three, four, of these child nodes, and in fact, we didn't even have to expand this intermediate node either to find that information. The reason that this approach is called alpha-beta pruning is that alpha and beta are the names of parameters used in the search process. The search is carried out recursively with values of alpha and beta being passed down to each phase. And at each phase, alpha will always be the maximum value that the maximizing player is assured of at that stage of the search, whereas beta will be the minimum value that the minimizing player is assured of at that stage of the search. Alpha starts out at negative infinity, and beta starts out at positive infinity at the beginning of the search, and each layer down, these values are updated to signal when certain branches of the search tree can be eliminated from consideration. 